All right, so wholeness. I uh, already did a full moon perspective for tomorrow. Tomorrow's full moon, 125, 24. 25th of January, 2024. I believe it's at 1245 or either 1254 p.m. It's right before 1 o'clock uh, Eastern time. That's the peak of the full moon. Um, but again, the full moon is a point of influence. You need to take a standpoint of um, awareness. God, I almost use that word control. I almost use that word control because that's really what it becomes when you're trying to fight something off. But stop getting into that mindset of fighting. You just need to understand that I got this. And I just see all the options. See, that's what the influence is. The things that can optionally take you off course or make you get somewhere quicker. So I've been watching it and, and we all see it. A lot of people are already um, telling themselves what this moon is going to do to them and how because I'm born this and my sign is in this degree and that degree. I don't have any other option. It's just going to get it's going to get me. You know, be careful what you keep submitting your will to. So let's get out of worrying about what the moon is going to do to you because you don't have, a, you know, control over yourself using the word. You don't have enough awareness to stop letting things control you when they only are points of influence. Let's see what the real vibrations is. Remember, I tell you from my perspective and experience, numerology on certain levels is just basically the universal language of vibration and sequences. If you understand how to break down numerology in certain fashions and not just mine, but in certain fashions and you make them pertain to what energy is actually doing and not what just what you want energy to present, then you can start to see shit for what it is. So you can understand all your signs, placements, life paths and all the other shit. But if you don't have awareness of the vibrations, you still stuck. You're still stuck. <clears throat> so let's worry about the vibrations for what tomorrow is going to show. So I did my post earlier. Go to my timeline and find it. I think I even tagged it for tomorrow. Um, tomorrow, the full, wolf, the full wolf moon. 125, 2024. Magically guided in manifestations. Take your time with that. Magically being guided into manifesting. But if you don't know your guide's agendas, that could get tricky. And I put one of my favorite hashtags, everything in this room has an agenda. Everything has an agenda from your ancestors to your lovers, to your friends, to your enemy, even to yourself. And that's the dangerous part, which will come up in this reading. The internal agenda within your show, within yourself, the e internal struggle within yourself produces an agenda. Wholeness to y'all. So 125, 24. 2024 just says I'm magically being guided and manifesting. <sighs> Let's see where that's going. I can talk on it, and here here's the thing: I can say everything that's gonna come out of my mouth, and then pull cards. It ain't gonna do nothing but say everything that already came out of my mouth. That's just the way it works. With me, that's the way it works. I can sit here and do a 30 minute dissertation on what I'm telling you is going on, and I can pull cards, and it'll back it up. That's not an ego moment. That is, again, understanding vibrational sequencing. When you understand vibrational sequencing, you don't need these tools. This is just a visualization point so that you can get what I'm saying. So magically, you're being guided into manifestation. But if you don't know that your guides are manipulating you because they have their own agenda, here's what you get. You get caught in the field of transmutation. You get caught in the field of death. Why? Because in order to manifest, something has to get manipulated into giving up its energy. Something has to get manipulated into giving up its energy in order to produce a manifestation. A seed gets buried and then it goes through the fertilization and the um, solar process of the sun, giving it its nutrients and all this other shit. And then it manifests into a plant you understand that a seed will get manipulated into manifesting that's what's going on with a lot of our existences is you holding on to shit that ain't gonna do nothing but use you to manifest it's a manifest its agenda or you're holding on to certain things because you won't manifest for yourself 
So your agenda is holding on to them, hoping they'll manifest for you. See the duality of it? It's a parasitic existence. It's not symbiotic. It's parasitic. The figure on this card is Olakun. The androgynous Orisha of the deep. The keeper of the deep. You know, Yemaya is the ruler of the waters. When you get down to that deep water where a lot of our ancestors um, perished, the secrets are down there. That'll get into this next number right here, 88. The secrets, the shit that's buried down with deep within your waters, your points of creation, your deep-rooted traumas, that shit that you hide from, you might be hiding from it, but it might not be hiding from you. It is aware of everything you got going on, and this is an internal struggle. It's aware of what's going on in your perspective of existence, and it's now going to try and push you towards what would pr um, produce a better effect for it. That'll lose again. Again, you hear me say this all the time. That'll lose some of you. When you have a trauma, a fear, um, fear of heights. If you have a fear of heights that is a deep-rooted trauma, not necessarily correlated to this current existence, but it's the results of older existences, those older existences will give you guidance in your current existence to keep you from traumatizing it. It does not want re-exposure to what it already ain't let go of because it didn't. And it's, it taught it death. So you have to understand that if you're magically being guided into manifestation, sometimes the manifestation is just to keep you safe. In the sense of your deep-rooted traumas, they just want to stay safe. And that means that they might put you in danger. That is that plays out in the sense of people with um, borderline psychosis, sociopathic tendencies, um, daredevil mentalities and things like that, where they are just reckless as shit. And you're just like, well, why don't you do better? man? I don't give a fuck about that. Why don't you give a fuck about it? Because ain't nothing guided me different. Why? Because the guidance within is only telling it to go down that same course. Recklessness. That way it does not have to do any work. So it's a deflection point on some things. So magically guiding the manifestations because you won't let go of what's already killing you mean you haven't learned alchemy. <laughs> Y'all like to use that word a lot. I'm an alchemist. Well, what are you transmuting? Everything else around you, but you ain't making no changes within. Next line, 88. You ain't making no changes within. 88, the gatekeepers, your traumatic memory points. Everything I just got through talking about, the core memories within you, Let's just say you think you've been here 10 life cycles before. All 10 of them life cycles are still imprinted in your soul. You really need to have a class on the soul. You really do. So within your soul is an imprint of every time you thought you did existence. And each one of them still has a memory of what it went through. So when all 10 of those are layered in within you, and again, like I just got through saying, and it's wit witnessing the 11th, your current, they're going to try and influence. Those become your spirit guides. It's not just, oh, uh, I got initiated into level two Reiki and then this this Lyrian came through or this cat person from the Green Star came through and now they're my guy. <clears throat> Whatever. 88, your traumatic core memory points. The gatekeepers. Within you, they often serve as your spirit guides. But if they only work for their traumas, you can kiss the baby. They already have an agenda. And sometimes the agenda is guiding you towards learning more about yourself. But oftentimes it's about guiding you so that they don't have no room to work on themselves. But they're trying to make sure that they work you into not adding more to the damn equation. So, again, I'm not telling you spirit guides are bad. Some of them will actually try and guide you so that you don't end up traumatizing yourself. And some of them guide you. And as long as you don't introduce them to no more trauma, they don't give a shit what you do. That's not for you. That's just trying to make sure that they maintain safety within themselves. So, them 88s. <laughs> when you look in the mirror, the only thing you're communicating with is what you can see. But if you can't see your core traumas, or if you have become your core trauma, sorry, that's what a lot of y'all are. A lot of y'all are walking traumas. May not resonate for you. I don't give a shit at the end of the day because, again, you got to let your life tell your tale. A lot of y'all are traumatized as shit. 
A lot of y'all are traumatized as shit and it's playing out in the unraveling of the collective consciousness where we currently are because the collective consciousness had hit has hit a shift point. If you understand the infinity loop, there's this little point in the middle. That's really the exit. In the end of the in the, the, the looping process, that point in the middle is where you can get off. The collective consciousness is currently sitting at that point in the middle where it's supposed to get off of the ferry of the uh, the Ferris wheel. But it has not done enough for itself to see its way off. And it's still sitting around waiting on somebody else to help it. it has not done anything to help itself except for further unravel itself and further empower empower the infinity loop by creating more core traumas. That it's so traumatized that it don't know how to sit still. So the only thing it keeps seeing and communicating with it is its own inability to stop itself and its false identity of waiting on somebody else to do it for it. So the only thing that you communicate with it is them voices that's really just irresponsible. They're irresponsible because and I had this this um this post I put up earlier and, and don't I don't go back and forth with people, but I was making sure that my point of um, I even put it on here where I was saying my generation dropped the ball. My generation dropped the ball and, and the one before me, the older generations dropped the ball because from my perspective, we were supposed to be getting rid of anything that produce or presents itself as harm so that my children and my children's children and my children's children's children don't have to worry about this shit. We were supposed to be unloading anything that presented a danger, not nurturing all this shit that presented a danger and trying to find a way to make it less dangerous. A lot of people didn't get that. A lot of people didn't get that because they applied their traumatized way of thinking and they all oh, will never give up hope. And things are going to get better because a new age is coming. And it's like getting right back to what I'm saying. You keep on communicating with your traumas of thinking that somebody come and save you. It's the equivalent of a lost child. I don't want to go the other route because it's too common, but it's the equivalent of a lost child in a shopping mall sitting in the corner waiting to be found and already producing the powerful imagination of how it's going to happen. But so traumatized and scared that they're just sitting there waiting in fear. Hello, collective consciousness. The only thing you're communicating with is your fear and your fear plays out as traumas and they have voices. So the 88 takes you into your breakdown of Hill's numerology, 55, 6. Remember, I keep telling you 55 is a chessboard. It is the master manipulator. It is the wave of experience itself. Six is your traumas. Six is the things you love. Six is your foundations. Six is the perfect track. Why do you think 666 has so much energy? My electrons, protons, neutrons. You're right. You've been atomically exposed to your own traumas. You ain't six, 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 marked by the beast. You, you are the beast. You are a beast in the field being used for your energy. Your horse, your cow, your oxen. Collectively, that's all we are. We are cattle. We are sheep. So getting in at 55, six, if 55 is what's manipulated me, but also 55 is the chessboard on which all pieces are moved. How do you move to pieces? You find them and you let them find their trauma because the only thing that they hate more than <clears throat> I can't say word hate. The only thing that they fear more than being still is being faced with a trauma. If you know anything about energy on, on, on certain levels, that should call out to you as a root chakra issue. If the only thing that makes me feel safe is not being confronted with danger, then I have a root chakra issue because fight and flight don't even process. I already told myself I'll run. There ain't no fighting me. It's just flight. Holy shit. The infinity loop. There's just flight. All I know how to do is move, but damn, I can't escape what I'm running from because holy shit, the only thing I'm running from is myself. That'll lose some of you too. So you create this chessboard and you're trying to find a safe way to move. But how do you move from yourself? How do you move from yourself? The wheel of fortune. You got to make a choice. You are already in overwhelm, my dear Lilith. You have already presented yourself with a choice. And no matter which way you move on a chessboard, 
It's going to separate you. No matter which way you move, it's going to separate you. 55, 6, no matter which way you move, you're going to end up in overwhelm. Why? Next line, 66, 22. You're going to end up in overwhelm because 66, self-sabotage, will become 22, your master builder. I will build off of what I've already been sabotaged by, and holy shit, it's going to create a trap. If you're already under sabotage, you're already enslaved, you're already in separation, you're already in abuse, and then you keep building for your abuser, Munchausen by proxy, Stockholm Syndrome, indoctrination, cognitive dissonance, foolishness, fuckery, idiocracy, slavery. Pick a name. So if you are building for what already got you mastered, when are you going to build for yourself? Two-part question. This is what happens when you build. This is what happens when you build for what's already got you in sabotage. <laughs> it becomes your ruler. It becomes a ruler because you've already diverted all your energy towards it. It becomes your Aries energy, your God energy. It becomes you on fire. It becomes a phoenix. So that's what happens on the first end when the only thing you do is build for what's already got you sabotage. It rules over you because you only focused on it. The second part should have been what would happen if I focus on me. Holy shit. Then that knowledge that I like to stand on would have showed me, holy shit. The only thing I need to know was me. Because in knowing me, I probably learned, holy shit, I was the manipulator. Why? Because I used my energy and I burnt myself. See that double-ended candle? You burnt yourself. You gave your light illumination into trying to find light in something else. Holy shit, sound like the moon. You gave your light, my dear son, to the moon and the moon gave it back to you and you thought it was greater than you. You understand that? The moon's light is only transmuted sun. We go through this class all the time, but some of y'all ain't caught up yet. So you gave your light to something that did not really have any power until you gave it to it and then you wanted it to be more powerful you powerful than you so that it could help save you where you didn't save yourself same shit different day 66 22 you sabotage yourself because you tried to build something to become greater than you but it's a cosmic impossibility you can lie to yourself for a long time though 77 Two, you can lie to yourself for a long time. 77, the master spiritualist, the master illusionist, the person that will keep pulling from shit that ain't real and shit that's fake and shit that is real and shit that ain't fake and blend that shit all together. Spiritual hot, spiritual hodgepodging. I'm going to take some of this and I know that that don't work for me, but I've seen other people use this. So I'm going to include it in my practice too. And I'm going to take some of this and they ain't got no correlation to my energy, but I'm going to use some of that too. Because I'm going to put it all together because the paths are many. Ain't one right answer. You're right. They're all wrong. <laughs> but you're too busy trying to be right that you ain't figured that shit out yet. Holy shit. 77-2. Your delusional connections to what you think you know. When it just told you, if you was paying attention to who sabotaged you, it was you. Knowledge sabotaged you because you invested in knowing something else instead of being aware of what was already reality. So you become delusional because you invest in everything outside of you. And then you'll do it and make you cry. It'll leave your world upside down. It's going to leave you worrying more about it. You ain't had a chance. You ain't had a chance to face where you became the phoenix, like I told you back here. And you ain't even faced the bigger fact that, holy shit, I was the divine empress. I was what created all this shit. My delusion of connecting into something that I've now convinced myself is greater than me leaves my world upside down. But here's the trick in the trap. I've invested so much of me into what's now greater than me that one day it'll come fix it. 
instead of taking accountability and responsibility for stop breaking it yourself. Two, 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 ten. Two, two, two. Trapped in connection. What am I connected to? Everything that got me fucked up. But what is it going to show me? Ten. My choices. But what's your choices? Be enslaved or be enslaved. Because remember I told you, ten, which is really just that 55 put together. Five plus five is ten. And I told you when you're dealing with 55, the chess board, no matter which way you move, that choice is going to pull you apart. This 22210 says you're trapped in connection and that choice that you make is going to pull you apart. Trapped in connection to the choice that pulls me apart. Lost in space like a motherfucker. A.K.A. what I call Tiny Rick. For my Rick and Morty fans, um, help. Let me out. This is not a dance. I'm begging for help. Holy shit, I'm begging for help from where? If you knew that Tiny Rick episode, he was trapped in a younger version of himself. He became an 88. So he was trying to speak to his younger version to let him know that, okay, time's up. I'm hurting myself now. I need to get out and get back into being responsible. This ain't all fun and games. But younger Rick didn't want to hear that. Tiny Rick didn't want to hear that. So he started pulling himself further apart and started getting sick. Hi. As disrespectfully respectful as I can, a lot of y'all are sick. Sorry, you won't get nurtured here. You only get the reflection of reality here. If you want to permit it to be your own illusion, that's your choice. But you got to let your life tell your tale. A lot of us are sick. A lot of us are sick and it shows. I mean, not just psychotic rants on and posts and shit like that. Hurt your feelings, you be the fuck all right. Not just psychotic rants and posts, but just going out into society and looking in people's eyes or looking at people's energy. Smells like bad fish. Looks like zombies out here. People so overwhelmed because they keep choosing their turmoils and traumas that they don't have no more peace left in them. P-E-A-C-E and P-I-E-C-E. Just empty vessels. And over the past couple of years, one of the things that a lot of people like to say is there's a lot of soulless people out here. And a lot of the soulless people who used to be looked at by people now see the people as soulless too. Why? Because you fell for the trap. You kept investing in paying more attention to this shit out here. But you ain't do the work on yourself. So 22210, you got trapped in the connection. You got trapped in a connection of watching where everything else was enslaved. You ended up enslaved too. Oops. And you love it. You ended up in trauma. You ended up loving what's already got you at separation. And now that reflection of separation externally only probably should have, but probably didn't shed the light on that separation internally. It should have before a lot of you it didn't a lot of you only focused on the trauma that you saw but you didn't go back to find the fucking seed that fed the whole plant all together but you'll have to let your life tell you tell on that one again so two 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 ten help let me out this is not a dance but you love it you love it. You love this separation. You love this war within yourself. It's me versus me. Or here's that one, and I'm sorry. Y'all just going to have to hate me on this one. I call my power back. I've been telling y'all that for years. Y'all better quit that shit. Quit calling your power back. Here, give somebody your power and let them shit on it. But I call it back. Now you got shitty power. I gave somebody my power. They abused it. You won't get no more. I ain't call that back. You got me, player. But I can't give you any more. Because why? I'm the source. Where'd the power come from? Me. Why would I want nasty-ass power back in me? Because now I got to deal not only with the traumas of who that power was connected to, but the traumas of the irresponsibility of why I shouldn't have gave it in the first place. Double-ended. Holy shit, help. Let me out. Trapped in irresponsibility. Why? 16. Trapped within your own irresponsibility. 16. The tower card. The one. The potential. Six. 
that foundation trauma, that one and that six, that potential trauma, holy shit, one plus six is seven. That one six might be me. The potential trauma and everything that I'm going through might be me. I've had nine relationships this year. We ain't but 24 days in. I had nine relationships this year. And you know what? Wouldn't none of them a match for me. At what point do you sit your punk ass down and say, holy shit, maybe it ain't them. Maybe it's me. The only correlating factor in all that shit you keep going through that ain't working for you. Nine times out of ten, is the only correlating factor is you. Either your inability to discern proper energetic investment or you just keep on investing in shit that's already broken because it ain't for you. But that's where ego kicks in because I want it. Spoiled ass kids. 16, spoiled ass kids. The tower is in chaos because the war is within an equivalent of the thinker versus the thought. But the thinker versus the thought could be just as complicated as a parent versus a child. This will hurt some of y'all feeling because this new age bullshit that y'all keep buying into this disruption of society because everybody's feelings should be nurtured. Whoop they motherfucking ass. Now, nah, fuck you. What? Pop. You can't do that because ancestrally that didn't work for us. Well, this new age shit y'all got going on ain't working either. So maybe a little bit of shame and a little bit of consequence might come in order. So when my thoughts start acting like a spoiled child, maybe I should put them motherfuckers back into alignment. Maybe I should assert my position as the parent and let them know I'm not dealing with that shit. Maybe some of y'all should try that shit with the traumas that y'all keep on going through. The shit you can't get out of your head. Maybe you should stop laying down with them and waiting on them to stop tapping you out and stop tapping in. Maybe you should make a good old stand for yourself. So 16, it could be just as complicated as you're going to get into compliance or you got to get the fuck out. I got all these crazy thoughts in my head. I know, I, I know I'm on Facebook 19 hours a day and all I see is death and rape and murder and sexuality. Somebody's titties hanging out. Somebody got a dick print on the TV or her pussy hanging out. And I wonder why all I got is sexual thoughts and disrupted damn thoughts in my head. What have you been eating? What have you energetically been consuming? Consuming, Lower vibrational shit. Wondering why you can't get into a high vibration. But that's just the internet. It don't affect me that way. Energetically, some of y'all are dumb as fuck. You your own abuser. You don't learn. You don't learn energy. You don't understand that, holy shit, everything is a vibration. Everything I listen to goes through me and if it's going through me holy shit it got in me i can become infected i can be disease x because i won't exit from everything else that's sick because i think it won't get me sick but you ain't never doing well never doing well you don't understand that if you expose yourself to radiation sooner or later you're gonna get sick so you don't understand that your movements, holy shit, remember I told you that five, that 55, that chessboard, it said no matter which way you go, you're going to fuck yourself. Whichever five you went to, it already abused you. In the sense of the tower card, whichever way you went, that hair fan already knew the answer. I'm going to go over here and find it, but you already knew the answer. Be still. Stop trying to find something that ain't got nothing to do with you. Now the guy here now, I don't know what to do. I'm lost. I done went that way. I'm running from something. I done got over here. Ain't nothing over there for me. I'm lost. So was the results of your movements to blame or your inability to keep still? Which one's to blame? You already know the answer, but a lot of you can't admit it because you're your own abuser. And that's the whole problem. Your inability to eat an ale, your inability to shh. And understand, well, holy shit, a lot of the energy that I apply to stuff in my life really is only feeding my ego. Because if I believed in it as much as I tell people I do, it should be helping me. Not 20 years later, and you so knowledgeable in everything you think you know, but ain't none of that shit fucking manifested for you. Ain't shown you not one point of stability other than you work for it. 
but it don't work for you. You ain't done nothing but establish another layer of limitations from learning half the shit out here. Got you scared to breathe. Scared to breathe. I can't because, ooh, so-and-so is in this and that. Or no, they ain't this and they ain't that. Got you incompatible with your compatibility, but got you compatible with your fucking trauma. Which again, like I said, means that them fives already got you. All we need you to do is move. So your tower says move, but remember I told you within your towers, your 88s, your gatekeepers. So let's stick with the tower for a second. We already did, we already verified no matter which way you move, you're your own abuser. If you don't own your own energy, if you're not accountable and responsible for your choices and you already got that finger pointing at somebody else, hello, full moon. You're really riding in Scorpio energy. I understand the full moon's in Leo, but if you understand the old classic tarot card like Rider Waite, it has a scorpion in there too. Why? Because that moon has a vindictive point of um, illumination should we say so the fact that you won't own your own stillness means you're going to abuse yourself so here's your 88s hidden within the 16s aimless as fuck it's another five it's another five three plus two them thoughts will tell you what to keep connecting to but i'm going to abuse you yeah but just keep connecting to the thing that is less abusive so let's ride this train out i'm the my own abuser and now i'm wandering aimlessly Holy shit, Moses, where you going? <laughs> Oops. You're going to Leo. You're going to the sun. You're marching off to your death. Why? Because I was aimless and I was already heading towards abuse. Here's where some of you might understand. If I start out at full power and I'm going on a journey, but I'm going on a journey to something that's going to hurt me. Along the way of the journey, I'm going to lose some of my strength because it's going to require my energy to conduct the movement. So heaven forbid, by the time I make it to my destination, I'm not at my fullest strength. I'm not at full power. I'm already ripe for the picking. I'm already ripe for the picking. If I go to war and I ran out of gas by the time I get to the battlefield... My tank's useless. Tank useless. You only sit there and fire from a fixed position. Holy shit. Fixed signs. Leo. <laughs> fixed. Think about gambling. That's a fixed bet. Think about the Super Bowl. That's a fixed game. Go Baltimore. <clears throat> so, the tower already told you. Everything's already fixed. Why is it fixed? Because I just told you. How to get to death quicker. Just follow me. Says your abuser. But again, who's the abuser? Your traumas that you won't fix and face. You won't take the value out of them and they value themselves more than you value you. So who are you going to listen to? My spirit guides. Spirit told me. Spirit had told me. Because you won't listen to yourself. Holy shit, the last one. Seven. Yourself in awareness. Yourself in awareness that, holy shit, I already made some moves. Myself in awareness that I already made some moves. Now I'm Alice in the damn looking glass. I'm over here with the caterpillar. High as fuck. Who are you? Who are you? That's what the caterpillar was asking. <laughs> shit, yo homie, who are you? And it wasn't a, who are you? As in, he needed to know. It was a, who are you? Before you ask me any questions, who are you? Are you speaking for your authentic self, not my traumatized self? Or am I speaking for my traumas? That was three different identities. Speaking for your traumas, but knowing that they ain't me, not smart. Speaking as my authentic self and knowing that I've already reworked the values of my traumas, smart. Or speaking as my traumatized self because I need my experiences to make sure I'm safe. That's a bad seven. That's a bad seven. That's a bad seven. Holy shit. Two plus five, seven. I'm only being guided by what's already got me burnt. I'm already being guided by what's got me burnt. And that's the queen of my fires. It's the only influence over why I keep getting burnt. Why? My traumas. 
Let's walk this backwards. Being guided by your traumas takes your power, leaves your reasoning processes at aimless, only teaches you that you abuse yourself, but you didn't abuse so hard. Choke me, daddy. Beat me, mommy. You love it. But you cry about needing more. But you won't let go of what you think you know. But yet what you know has only got you burnt. And it's ruling over you because you focus more on it. Why? Because you are under overwhelm. Because all you've done is invested in it and not yourself. That the only thing you know how to communicate with is it. But you can't transmute it. Because it is you. Only you don't know who you are. And we say this every day. You don't know who you are. You just become subject <laughs> to what you've been transmuted into. You've been alchemized. You thought you was going to change that lead into gold. That lead done led you astray. That lead that you thought you was going to change only changed you. And now you've been transmuted by experience. Let's go forward. And the only thing you communicate with is that you that you no longer know. And that's overwhelming because, holy shit, I can become anything. So you try to focus on what's the safest thing. And once you figure out the safest thing, I dump all my magic into knowing it. But even knowing it ain't never shown me what I need to see and it's left me in a world that I need to keep on transmuting because I just want to be love. But all I see here is abuse, self-reflection. But that abuse has only left me aimlessly in cycles of death reincarnation and with a shit ton of guides a shit ton of guides a bunch of things will guide you in this realm because you won't guide yourself years ago and i still see some people talk about it now as they'll tell you this school earth is a lesson earth is a schoolhouse for um spirits you have spirits that are here you have walk-in spirits that are here to complete their mission you have layoff spirits who come here and they just here taking up space you have indigo seeds you have star seeds you have this you have that and then you have other spirits who are come here who learn how to guide you that sounds like a whole big ass fucking process of experimentation because if i'm being guided by a guide who doesn't know how to guide holy sheep shit batman you gonna fuck around and find out. That guy that don't know how to guide because he's just learning the process, he gonna tell you what you need to be. But you'll fuck around and find out because that thought, that guy, is gonna try and show you your traumas. But that guy don't know that traumas is your fear. Facing your traumas is a fear. That he only tra he or she, that guy, only traumatizes you by putting them in front of you. Somebody got that. Your guide means well. You know what? It's time for this person to come off the reincarnation wheel. Samsara's wheel. It's time for them to come off the reincarnation loop. They just need to face their traumas and get off of this Akashic bullshit. Face your trauma and then you have no more lessons. <laughs> Don't show me that. Don't show me that. So you traumatize. They already traumatized and now they run further away. Now that guide and got fired. <laughs> Damn guide and got fired. Because the guy was trying to help you, but you don't want no help. You don't want no help. You don't want to be here. You don't want to hear anything that don't make you feel safe. I can verify that. I talk to y'all all day long since about 2013. You don't want to hear nothing that don't fit what you think you know, but yet what you think you know, here's where it left you. Oops. Like Martin, still needing to get to the top of the mountaintop. And I fear I've been led astray and into a burning house on fire. Oops. You still just trying to overcome them thoughts that didn't already fooled you. That three, them thoughts. That zero, that fool. I'm just trying to overcome where I fooled myself. But keep coming over to make sure I ain't the fool. Holy shit, the infinite loop. Trying to find myself in the experience of myself, but only shitting on myself in the process. Sit your punk ass down and be still. Sit your punk ass down and be still. Focus on you. Then you'll figure out where the fire is at. Because holy shit, you'll become God. G-O-D. You'll see you were the generator, the operator, 
and the only thing destroying you was you. You'll see you were the trap. How do you get out of the trap? Stop trapping yourself. My dear crabs. <laughs> Happy full moon.